Hey guys, from the conversations that you have with the coaches, not just this season, but you've been around the facility for such a long time in regards to this early session with the early enrollees, what does that look like in regards to what they put these guys through, what they're looking for, what what do the drills look like, What what is the format at this point? Well, I think that in general, um, you know, they just have regular workouts, I guess, and a regular workout to me is arriving at 6 a.m. and, you know, some days it'll be running and doing different kind of agility drills and these kind of things out on the fields. Then some days it's lifting weights. I would presume some days it could be a mix of both. I think that's primarily what they do. Today they had one of their mat drill days, which is everybody on the team arrives at an early hour and they put down these wrestling mats and go from station to station for an hour. And it's a high intensity type workout where you're doing, you know, close quarters type of uh, agility and strength uh, type things. And, you know, the whole rope thing where they're, you know, got the heavy rope and they're, you know, doing that back and forth and all this kind of teamwork stuff. And it's all team bonding. So it's two different things. It's, it's, you know, what you'd consider a normal workout, which I'm sure is still high intensity, you know, getting the most out of these guys in an hour. And then these team wide events like uh, they put on uh, Twitter today, the athletic director, Gene Smith, was there and he took a little video and put it out there to give from the skybox. They have a skybox inside the practice facility uh, so that you could see what that was all about. And then uh, Ryan Day also tweeted out uh, an edited snippet of him down there blowing the whistle and and kind of supervising the mat drill as well. So those are kind of the things they do a lot of different things, kind of vary it up. I think it would be easy for people to burn out if it was the same thing three days a week or however many days a week they they go in there. So I think they try and keep it fresh. But at the same time, this is uh, Coach McMurati, the noted strength and guru, said uh, that this month, February, is the most important month in terms of making a jump in terms of strength and maybe agility and quickness and these kind of things. And really, uh, you know, maybe not necessarily conditioning in terms of getting ready to go run a four mile race or something, but just making those incremental improvements in strength and and agility and these kind of things. This is when uh, these big advances can be made. And then obviously they'll have some conditioning leading into the start of spring practice, which will be uh, long about March 2nd or 3rd. It's coming up here before you know it. it. Actually, it's weird the way they do it. They do a week in March, then they have their spring break, then they come back and do three or four more weeks leading up to their spring game on April the 13th. The academic calendar doesn't necessarily mesh with uh, uh, what they were trying to do in the spring, but uh, they got the whole gist of it is they need to have it done so that the guys can take the last two weeks of April and concentrate strictly on final exams and finishing uh, the semester in a strong manner academically. So, you know, you just kind of parse it out the best way that they can. And, and uh, this is the way the schedule looks right now. So uh, these guys are getting a baptism by fire, that's for sure. And uh, yesterday was an important part of their maturation, their first chance to sit down and get grilled. There are probably 40 media people there. Each player had his own table, and it was kind of like speed dating. You go from one table to the next and talk to as many guys in a half hour as you can possibly squeeze in. And uh, really, I mean, you have all all facets and all uh, walks of life involved in this, and every position group. And uh, each of the 14 uh, early enrollees, and, and some of them were comfortable talking to the media. Others, it was obvious this was something they've never, ever done before in their life. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll bring those guys along as, as we go. And we've seen guys develop in that role as well. But uh, honestly, the most important thing for these guys right now is to get acclimated academically and uh, also make those uh, jumps from being high school guys to being guys who won't stand out too too badly for the wrong reasons uh, on the football field during spring practice and preseason camp. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, bringing you Ohio State talk each and every week, courtesy Tony Gerdeman from the Ozone.net and also Steve Hellwagon from Bucknuts of 247 Sports. We've got a couple of questions coming in. Also want to get your guys' thoughts on your conversations with uh, the coaching staff as well here in just a second. I had just posted a couple seconds ago the um, comment by Todd B., because of some 
uh, possible retirement talk surrounding uh, Larry Johnson and the defensive line, whether that's impacting recruiting. Well, there's always going to be talk about Larry Johnson retiring just because of his age. Uh, I, I think it does impact it somewhat, but they've already got the number one defensive end, number two defensive end in 2021 committed in Jack Sawyer. And yeah, he's a central Ohio guy. But you know they're they're doing fine. They had uh, I think three defensive linemen signed in this class who are kind of tweeners between defensive ends and defensive tackles. But <coughs> it's going to be a uh, a source of negative recruiting by other schools and, until he's not here. But he continues to tell people he's not going anywhere, and you know, so I, I, I guess you believe him. And you know he, Greg Madison is going to come under that same thing, but he doesn't really have a position of his own other than the bullets and the Sams and. Really, that's such a pigeonhole that it doesn't really, you know, count in that regard. But yeah, they're going to continue. Teams will continue to negatively recruit, um, and then Ohio State just answers it as best as they can. You know, Larry Johnson's as an assistant with them uh, that the the players all like as well. And so it's, you know, it it is what it is. Ryan Day knew that going in when he decided to keep Larry Johnson on board. And why wouldn't you? He's one of the best defensive line coaches in America, and so. You use them for as long, you know, you keep them around and, and have them coach your players for as long as, as he wants to do it. And then you thank him for his service when he's done. And this is Ohio State. You go out and replace him with somebody, uh, you know, that, that you feel is the best coach in the nation for what you need. And one of the things that Ryan Day has talked about is he wants consistency and he wants guys to stick around for a long time. And so the last couple of hires, you've seen it come from internal, with you know, being like Brian Hartline at receiver, Corey Dennis at quarterback, where they don't necessarily – they aren't looking to go anywhere anytime soon. And so you wonder if maybe that same thing will happen once Larry Johnson decides to retire as well, if it won't just be an internal hire who has been groomed by Larry Johnson for a few years. I, uh, I had a chance to talk to Tony Johnson, who uh, is one of – Larry Johnson's two sons, and of course, Larry Johnson Jr. and Tony Johnson both played at Penn State during the time that uh, Larry Johnson was an assistant coach there. I know that Larry Johnson is, I'm going to say, he was born in 1952, so that puts him somewhere in the realm of 67 to 68 years old right now. And, you know, that that's not a number that um, you really can escape from. I think that is uh, a situation where, you know, if, if he called it a career tomorrow, nobody could argue or, or quibble or, or complain about that. In talking to Tony Johnson, he said uh, there that uh, his mother, Christine, and Larry's wife, um, you know, is, is for the time being fine with him being an assistant football coach at Ohio State. And yet, uh, he kind of intimated that uh, when that day comes and she tells Larry Sr., hey, it's, it's time, you know, we need to move on with our lives, that that, that day may come. So uh, I said to Tony Johnson, I said, uh, you know, I think Buckeye Nation would, would probably vote, vote her down on that because uh, I think they would prefer an appointment for life like a Supreme Court justice at this point uh, for Larry Johnson Sr. But I think we all need to understand and recognize that uh, all good things will come to an end at some point. And I don't know if it's one year, three years, five years, whenever that may be, but I think he loves every minute of what he's doing at Ohio State. Watch him. He comes out while the players are just uh, <clears throat> getting ready to leave the locker room. He comes out about five minutes early, and he will go out there on the field, and he'll be bumping around, listening to the music and everything, like he's 21 years old, you know. So he uh, – he still enjoys every every minute of this, every aspect of it. I think he loves it. The one thing Tony Johnson told me, <clears throat> and uh, I don't think I'm breaking a confidence when I say this, is when Larry Johnson got to Ohio State and started working for Urban Meyer, I don't think he had a full appreciation of what Urban Meyer's expectations were out of the assistant coaches, which is arrive sometime around 6 and leave sometime around 10 p.m., and Larry Johnson would get his work done and he'd get in the car and leave at seven o'clock. And, you know, he said, no, I got it all done. I'm good. And, uh, you know, the other guys kind of scratched their heads a little bit looking at that. But, you know, when your position group produces a Bosa Bosa young, you know, <laughs> and you help recruit those guys there. Yeah, Larry, we'll see you in the morning. <laughs> it's kind of like, we'll take it from here. So, 
yeah, I think there was a little bit of uh, culture shock uh, with that. And I think Larry did the best that he could maintain his sanity through some of that. But, uh, you know, I don't know what the ramifications will be under Coach Jay, Day if it's going to be quite as demanding. But, uh, again, uh, I think he's very comfortable and happy at Ohio State. And I think that, um, uh, you know, as long as he stays, you know, he's kind of on bonus time. As long as he stays at Ohio State – and Ohio State can reap the benefits and the rewards of uh, everything he's done. Uh, that'll be great. And now he needs to turn his sights on Zach Harrison and Tyreek Smith and make them the next in that long line of uh, Bosa, Bosa, Draymond Jones, Young that are just out of this world defensive linemen. Well, Steve, in terms of Ryan Day's uh, demand for work, I'll tell you, you know, there are a couple times last season where I left the football facilities after Ryan Day. So, you know, and that was yeah. 15. So let's, I think he's, I think he's a little bit easier on his coaches than, than Urban Meyer. I think he's got a perspective on it. And the other mm -hmm. thing is, is if you're there and you're doing your work, which is recruiting, game planning, practice planning, conducting practice, supervising your guys, you know, uh, each of these assistants has eight things on their job a description that they've got to take care of. And it's not an easy job. I mean, trying to herd a group of 18 to 22 year old guys and, and, and make sure that they're staying out of trouble, doing their work academically, getting their workouts in uh, proper nutrition, uh, mental health counseling, you know, cause things come up academic counseling cause things come up and everything else. Uh, it's not an easy job, certainly, but uh, his guys are attached to him. Uh, like nothing you've ever seen, really, in, in that regard as a position coach sure. in my time at Ohio State. They know he can get them to the promised land. And it's more than just the ones we we cited, Bosa, Bosa, and Young. It's, you know, Tyquan Lewis, Jalen Holmes, uh, two or three other guys banging around the league as well. Uh, and probably a couple more going in if uh, Devon Hamilton had a great senior bowl. And uh, sounds like he'll be uh, moving up the ranks at defensive tackle a little bit. Uh, obviously, uh, Chase Young's going to go second, we presume second overall in the draft. And uh, he just continues to add to that legacy of what what Larry Johnson can do for you, I think, is, uh, you know, what, what you look at. But as I said, you know, it's year 2020, and uh, he's worked well beyond uh, the age I would prefer to work at. So, uh, uh, no one could begrudge him if uh, he decides uh, to, to call it a career. Come on, Steve. You're not bumping back and forth to the music at age five blank. Well, well, here's the thing. I, I talk a mean game. I'm 50. I'm going to be 52 next week is my birthday. And uh, the issue is this is I'll probably be doing this when I'm 70. So, you know, that's just the, the fact of the matter. But um, one way or the other, whatever the next step after the Internet is, it, injecting the information directly into people's brains, I guess, is the next Every, every, every Buckeye fan will have a chip, and the information will go flow, flow seamlessly right into their consciousness. So. I think we need to get prime for a big party, big celebration next week is what we well, need It's to just do. 52. It's not a big one. My wife had a, a – it's funny. Two years ago, she had a surprise party for me, and uh, the party was on, like, February the 3rd, like 10 days before my birthday. And I walked in the place, and everybody said, surprised. She go, are you surprised? I go, yeah, it's not my birthday. It's like <laughs> a week and a half before my birthday. So – that was kind of a funny thing, but uh, no, um, I don't know. This keeps me young being around these young guys. And, and as Tony knows, uh, every year we have four or five new people show up to cover the team and everything. And uh, we show them the ropes the best we can. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, really, uh, this will be year 26 for me on Ohio State football full time. And I'm on year 32 during uh, Ohio State men's basketball. So that. Uh, uh, and, and year 32 has had its uh, issues, let's just say. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, anyway, we'll, we'll just take it from there. Well, you guys have definitely made 36 weeks uh, enjoyable for me and very easy for me to just uh, throw out the questions and let you guys um, pontificate on Ohio State football. And in addition to the 36 weeks, obviously, we've had dozens and dozens, if not more, than that segments with these two gentlemen, Tony Gerdeman in the middle from the ozone.net, Steve Hellwagon from Bucknuts 247 Sports. I cannot encourage you any more than I possibly can to just get over there and soak up the insight and the information much more than you can for this one hour that these gentlemen are kind enough to give us each and every week. Yes, Steve. 
Uh, I see a question here. I, I just want to throw in uh, Todd B asked if there's a guy that has been with Larry for a few years that could be getting groomed. I, and I know Gerd referenced him a little bit ago. Uh, Kenny Anuike, is that how you pronounce it? I think uh, he's been his right. And yeah, he has been his right hand man, and he obviously looks like he played college football. I don't have his bio in front of me, but he's been there probably four or five years as the the main defensive line, not a full time assistant coach. But it looks like they're kind of grooming him, and you know whether he can carry on that legacy or not, or they go outside the program and go get somebody that Ryan Day is comfortable with from his past. Hard to say, but uh, Kenny is a guy who um, is kind of like. Uh, uh, a mini Larry Johnson. I mean, he he's he's a heart and soul type guy with that defensive line group, and uh, you can tell with the uh, the way he's built uh, kinship with all those guys, just the same as Larry Johnson. They trust him and, and what he can give them. Yeah, and he played college football at Duke. I uh, had a cup of coffee in the NFL, but he's from the Columbus area as well. Which That's a great him, fit. Which would make him another uh, <clears throat> possibility there. You got a guy who uh, is from the area, has family and has roots and that's you know that's a lot of what ryan day is looking for i'd say he'd be next in line if and when that day ever comes and uh you know again five years from now we'll we'll address that 